Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I am doing a 30 minute session for a home. This is gonna be so exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and read the client goals. And, and this client is a family of people. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and get connected here. All right, so the goals are, me and my siblings would love you to explore and heal energies of our childhood home. Every time we visit, our mom still lives there, our energy goes down. I get feelings of depression and powerlessness. Hmm. This house sits on the land that a few generations lived. Okay. Just give me a moment here. I'm just going to absorb the energy information. This is this makes me sad. This makes me really sad. I'm going to relax. I'm going to spruce some things up. We're going to make it right. We're going to make it feel good. Okay, let's see here. Okay. I will say that just reading this alone, I mean, I know you're sharing some sad information, but there really is something that makes me feel sad about this. And even when I'm going into access this space, there's some weird energy stuff in the way. And it's very hard to describe what does it look like. Um, let's just say a black tattered rag um, hangs over some sort of beams of wood, but this is sort of black and looks like tattered black um, in different layers of it as I'm walking in here. Oh, what is going on here? So, so somebody just runs by and just sort of uses three fingers and just sort of scratches me on the cheek. And as I continue to go in further, there just seems to be a powwow, like um, people, several people sitting around a fire. But they aren't human. They look skeletal, more like black skeletons. And everything is kind of in a black ash. But the fire is quite noticeable. I mean, there's some orange and yellow, like the fire is very vibrant and noticeable. And the energy is totally distorted. I mean, I don't feel like I'm welcome to, to into their powwow experience. I don't feel welcome. I don't. The energy is just very distorted. I'm just gonna have to wait for a moment. This could take some time because there, I can tell there's a lot of layers going on here. So when I say that the energy is distorted. It should have some semblance of, um, I feel sick, I feel sad, I'm not sure how I feel, um, I'm afraid to tell you how I feel. It should have an expression like this. When I go into the energy space of your childhood home, it's very distorted energy and it's got a lot of layers of information and it won't tell me how it feels. It doesn't necessarily allow me to feel as though I am present in this space. So as I'm going in, I'm making connections with so many pieces of frequency. And uh, there's a lot more frequency for me to move through in order to bring this all into balance, okay? So let me just, I'm just rooting in here and getting grounded and... I changed the color of the fire to purple and I put skin on all these skeletons and create people. And when I do this, the people look very short, like, uh, like they, they're normal sized people and then something came and then scrunched them down. So they would be like midget size people, but they look like, uh, like humans, but they just look like scrunched humans. There's a man here. He has a pipe and a gray and, and um, gray, white, black kind of peppered mustache. He looks smartly dressed. So he has a white colored shirt, black pants, a black uh, rounded hat, a pipe, glasses. There's a woman here as well. There's other people here, but these, this man, I, I notice very detailed. The woman, I can kind of tell that there's a woman here with a dress on, but I can't see the others right now. 
I'm going to have to make other arrangement. I just snap my fingers and I create walls floor ceiling as though we are inside a home and I move this purple fire into actually a fireplace. So I'm going to create a, a grounded space and see what we can do to uh, get more information and truly bring this into balance. I ask him if he feels comfortable sitting on the couch and experiencing the fire within the fireplace. He won't speak to me. Hmm. I'm going to place <laughs> I'm going to place a fire actually where he is sitting. So he's actually sitting in the purple fire right now. I just want to see how he reacts to this. All right. It burns off all the illusion of his face and he looks really creepy looking. I mean, he's a very creepy looking skeletal thing. It's skeletal, but it also looks like skin, almost like the there's no bone, but it was all skin all along and it's kind of rubbery. It looks very strange. And when I go into this being, which is very strange looking, I enter into kind of an underground thing going on. And it's a big cave type space and there's lots of these things down here. And they're all mining or they're working on opening this up. It's also very hard for me to step into this place, but I'm going to do it because I need to be in this place. I got to keep moving energy around in order for it to re reveal itself, okay? I'm in this space. It just it creates a huge energy orb, like a big fat belly that's trying to push me out. Like, you can't come in here. It just keeps trying to push me out. And it's very stinky, uh, very stinky in this cave place. I'm just going to touch the outside of the orb. And I'm going to say, it is time. You will self-realize today. And we're not playing these games anymore. Okay, there's a, so much messed up stuff going on here. So as I do this, there's energy trying, literally trying to throw me against the walls that I created. And I'm just, just standing here, just putting love into this orb. I mean, it's screaming at me. It's attacking me. It's trying to throw me around. It, it's just creating a lot of illusions that I'm just, I, you know, it can scream all at once. It can't do anything to me. And now I'm touching it on the third eye with my other hand here. And I say, you will be at peace now. Oh, man. Just a lot of hurt. So the next thing that I do is I'm going a little bit deeper. I need you to know that everything that we've seen thus far is the fabrication of trying to bring this energy into a self-realization. So we have to sometimes create things in order for it to self-realize about how it feels and how it wants to express itself. Because it's so distorted in here, it's hard to create an organization of understanding. So we create the organization of understanding in order to make it more of the true understanding. It's not illusionary anymore. So we just keep going through the layers, all right? So the next layer here is, it's like a seam. It's like, let's say the floor to the wall. There's a seam where there could be like an infestation in here. It looks like a lot of dirt is really what it looks like. But there's people in it. There's little tiny people in it, like babies or people in the crack here of the floor and the wall. Tiny versions of people. You know how those skeletons just look like they were scrunched down? Now we have little like inch long tiny little people and they're all in the mud and the black mold of this crack and crevice. It's just very strange. So I'm just going to go in here. Again, the energy is trying to push me out. It doesn't want me to come in here. That's okay. A lot of sadness still wanting to come out, but it just, it only goes just a little bit. It says I'm sad and then it's like, sh tries to be quiet. <sighs> All right. 
next thing I'm I'm tapping into the frequency that is wanting to keep pushing me out so I can find it now it keeps doing it so I can find it now and as I'm at, I'm moving towards it this is a very hard journey okay this isn't an easy one <laughs> and there's a lot of complex layers to this and we're looking at like a like a, a fifth dimensional dodecahedron or something crazy because there's a lot of pathways and there's a lot of distorted energy and I'm walking now through a hallway of strange looking I mean it's like I'm in a weird shape and all these little glass like mirrors and I'm walking through a very distorted room but it's a hallway and I'm just going to keep going towards the energy that is wanting to push me out and it wants me to, it's like, it's, it's the energy is wanting me to go here um, to the right. And I'm just saying no. And I create a doorway and I walk through the wall and I'm going into a very dark place. There's a man with pure white skin. He looks human. This room has got a dome shape to it. And there's, I mean, it's cool looking in here. It's a cool looking place. Uh, it's got stone walls. It's kind of like black, black sooty stone. I mean, the stone is old, dirty. There's no like roots or plants growing around in here, but it's kind of a dark place. And he's looking out a window. The light doesn't necessarily shine in, but I can see light at the window. And he sits at a wooden table and this table is also black. And he's wearing like a black lab coat. He has a long nose. He's old. He has white hair. And his eyes are white. When he looks at the white, uh, sort of this uh, opening here, this window that has white light, but it doesn't necessarily penetrate through. But his eyes, when he looks at it, are just pure white. I mean, they're just pure white glowing and looking at this white that is seen at the window. Boy. Okay. There's a lot I can do in here. There's black bats. There's some bat noises going on. I go to touch his heart to learn more about him. And I see this space has a pinpoint in the center of it. And another shape uh, emerges. And it's all outlined in black. And there's many, 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 many triangles that come to a single point in the center. So that's, but I can see through it all. I mean, I can see the room and everything, but I can see the many lines of the outlines of the many triangles and all the triangles point to the center of the room. And it's sort of spherical. The shape is spherical, but many triangles that create a spherical shape. I feel sadness emanating from his heart. He doesn't say he's trapped. He doesn't say he's imprisoned. He doesn't feel as though there's a lacking in his life choices. He's not he's he's not necessarily helping me to understand what his position and his meaning is. When I go to touch the pinpoint in the center of the room, my finger starts to bleed. But now I can actually soften the pain here. And for some reason, I'm inspired to take the heart of this mad scientist, this old man. He's not necessarily crazy, though, you know. I don't know what his deal is yet. But taking this heart, which is kind of like a, like a jalapeno pepper in size and shape. It kind of looks like that. Um, and then I put it um, into the center here. Something is majorly shifting. Don't know what it is yet. The, okay, my spirit guides are telling me um, it's okay to say what I'm seeing here. It's as if this jalapeno pepper heart uh, starts to, and it's red, by the way, it's uh, starting to create lightning bolts that go all over the room, and they even uh, go into his heart space where the heart has been taken and put into the center, and the lightning bolts are also going into him. The lightning bolts are going all over the place in here, and they're whitish, yellowish lightning bolts. He doesn't seem to notice. He doesn't seem to notice that I even moved his heart into the center of the room. He doesn't seem to notice. I'm placing normal eyes back in here. 
he's starting to become more aware. I'm closing this window. This window is not, there's something unnatural, unhealthy about it. So I'm just going to close the window. We're just going to close this place just for a moment. I need to get him detached from that window of just white. I mean, it looks like just white at the window. And I need him to look at this. What is going on in here? I'm telling him a bunch of stuff. And I'm, I was, it would be like, look at this. What is going on here? The people we saw, the purple fire created all this stuff. You don't want me to come in, blah, 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 blah. The hallway, all the geometric shapes. Blah, blah, blah. I'm telling him all the stuff that we've seen so far. And I'm saying, what is all this? He's uh, sort of mesmerized now that he's able to see, sort of mesmerized by this in the center. And the lightning bolts are changing colors, are becoming more pink and purple. And it's creating a shift in his heart and he's starting to feel emotional and even kind of shaky. And he longs to have his heart return to him. But it's meaningful. I mean, it's, it's not, a, it's a very meaningful feeling. He's almost reached it. He's touching the outside of it right now. Can he have his heart return to him? Can he have his heart? I say, yes, you can. The bats start to scream in here and my covering of the white window starts to, to break and like a breeze tries to get his attention. But he's mesmerized now by this heart, which is starting to feel very full of love. Everything is getting distorted again. It's starting to create weird frequency lines that uh, it's just distorting everything. That's okay. So just hang in there for a moment. And I'm going to go become him for a moment. Because the thing is... I know this is all very strange, but the thing is this energy frequency that he is a representation of must learn how to let go of all distractions and choose the one thing that he desires in this scene. And so for everything to just sort of blow up right now and make all this noise, well, why wouldn't I close the window again and remove the bats? Because he needs that to distract him. But for him to fully choose from deep down inside, this heart means that he is choosing it full full fledged. He knows that this is what he wants. He's not choosing to waver on what it is that he wants. So I become him and I help him here to self realize within him within himself that it is okay to grasp this heart. It is okay, that's why I'm here to help him grasp this heart and I can tell that is the one thing that he wants to do and I'm sending him all the noises of the bats in the window and I'm saying do you want the bats do you want the window do you want all this stuff to see how strong or how weak he is to choosing the one thing that he desires he's uh he's uh muting it out he's overriding it He's now able to clutch this heart and it turns into a white orb and it's pink still also glowing and all the noise and all this lightning bolt and all the intensity and it's like <laughs> all this is now silenced and he feels extremely strange. He doesn't necessarily know who he is or why any of this is happening or what has happened. Still distorted energies but far less. He's, uh, so I'm helping him. It looks sort of like a crystal ball with a beautiful sort of pink colored, hot pink, neon pink, glowing pink, sort of jalapeno hot heart on the inside. It's really cool looking. And then there's all this white light that shines outside of this crystal ball. And it's an orb. And I'm getting him to place it into his heart space, his heart space. All right, he does it. Just a huge energy shift there and something mega happens. It's a new challenge, okay? 
I see him uh, in another, I don't know, like a jail cell, more of a dungeon-y place. Not like a science, mad scientist, uh, crazy lab at the top of a domed like tower or something. This is more underground and there's bars and it's dirt everywhere and he has a shackle around his neck. He, he's starting to look like Albert Einstein. It's just giving us the effect of the scientists uh, uh, again. And I keep thinking of mad scientists for a reason. So this shackle around his neck has many uh, uh, chains that are attached to all the walls and the bars and everything and he is trapped here. And I stay with him, I tell him, you're doing everything right. Ignore this illusion. I mean, it just does, it's not actually real. You can be set free at any time. You have your heart. You have all the light within you. Do you believe in yourself? He's uh, got dealing with distortion in his own mind and he says, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who I am. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what is going on. It's like he's got amnesia. I don't know. I just don't know. I, I'm not sure. What, what, who are you? Why am I here? What is this? Am, am I, is this real? I mean, he's just kind of confused. I'm going to go within him again. And I'm sending him images of Bambi. <laughs> the happiest moments of Bambi. <laughs> and Bambi's friends, the other animal creatures, and butterflies, and wonderful things. Happy happiness, you know. Sunny days, happy memories, childlike memories. I say, what do you think about this? If you didn't have to understand any of this, what is it that you think about this beautiful idea? He reaches his hand into the beautiful idea to hold the butterfly. Then he takes the butterfly from the image and he brings it into this place. And it's, it turns grayish white when it comes into this uh, dungeon-y place. He says it's lost its life, it's lost color. It's lost its life force energy. And then he puts his hand back into the bright, colorful place and the butterfly comes back to life. He says, it's me. I'm doing it. I'm doing that to the butterfly. Hmm. Now give me a minute here. I tell him I want you to, to say that I am not doing that to the butterfly. Nothing is actually doing that to the butterfly. The butterfly is still in full color and it has nothing to do with you harming it at all. It has something to do with distortion energy. It's distorting what you're seeing. You're not seeing it correctly. This kind of, um, this is giving off an echo of, um, Somebody who who's really intelligent, like an Albert Einstein in their own right, really smart, and then comes down with a dementia or um, Alzheimer's for a long time kind of thing or a developing um, event of this kind, and then literally loses track of self. And this distortion energy is very much so I could imagine what it might be like to feel so distorted about reality. That's what this is very much so like. And uh, I tell him, I want you to try this again, but this time, remember the power that you possess within yourself. Allow the butterfly to remain as it is. When it comes to you, into your realm, it is still vibrant and bright and beautiful. Just like you are. <sighs> He's doing it. Quite a lot of energy here. <sighs> He's managing it. <sighs> He's managing it. Oh, gosh. It's just, he's doing it, but it's like he can't hold it. To the, he can't hold it there, so it's turning black now. It's like turning black. And I say, no, you're doing a great job. Believe in yourself. You're doing a great job. But it's black. But I say, no, it isn't black. Let's let it just remain on your finger for a moment. Continue to look at it. It's okay. And if it wants to be black, if it wants to be blue, if it wants to be white, if it wants to be yellow, then just let it be that. 
Just let it be whatever it wants to be. If it wants to be white, then we'll just let it be white. But know that it's not a bad thing. And you're not harming it. And when it's ready to be colorful, then it will be colorful for you. So the butterfly is starting to turn into a red bird, a cardinal. And it's starting to sing. And the cardinal, as it sings, it shows me a lot of really ugly-looking ogre-like beings um, down here that are trying to... Uh, like holding on to the chains of this man, the this collar, and then uh, doing this energy distortion. It's a whole realm of them. I mean, they look like a, what you could imagine um, in Billy Goat's gruff, <laughs> the, the troll under the bridge. You could imagine they all kind of look like this. They're ogres, ogres, um, ogre-like people. So the bird just keeps singing, 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 and singing. And, and as it sings, it, it, it allows me to see through distortion, to see these ogres. And I tell the men, take another one of Bambi's friends. Take Bambi. Bring the animals in. They're strong. And they can help you. <sighs> he's so below. He's crying. He's breaking down. But he's, uh, he's allowing this to happen. And, and Bambi's coming in. Thumper. The rabbit, like the, the animals are coming in. Uh, so all this is sort of this place of beauty is starting to merge here and it's starting to make it so it's, a, it's, a, it's like he's becoming a part of the Bambi world. This place is starting to merge with the Bambi realm. And uh, it's getting bright and bright and bright. And I'm, and I'm allowing this energy to mer merge with this troll area. Ah. Uh, this is also attached to the man's own mind. I'm telling you this is very complex. But it's also a projection. So is it within his mind or is it really out there? It's a fascinating question about reality. So. Okay, I welcome the ogres. I tell them it's okay to be at peace. And stop imprisoning this man. Which is also imprisoning yourselves, imprisoning him along with you as you imprison him. So nobody is winning right now. <laughs> uh, the ogres struggle with this concept, but they are too kind of hypnotized in some weird way. Not necessarily convinced they're bad. It's like a weird energy hypnosis. Okay. I'm merging the ogre realm with this realm because it seems to be a different dimension. So just merging them together, Bambi realm. So we're just bringing it all together. Let me see what happens. Okay, it's all starting to uh, return to that odd pinpoint in the center of that one room. And I hear all the triangles shatter like a shattered glass and it just goes you know, shatters and uh, goes in a million pieces, but it all dissolves and disappears. And the room starts to just be a room. And I notice that there's light on the walls, like uh, fire, like lit torches and things. And it's okay now to break down the walls and the ceiling. It's looking brighter in here. There's no dark uh, cemented uh, bricks or anything. No weird window of white. It's all ready to break apart and fall apart now. Because it's not, it's not necessary anymore. It doesn't need to exist anymore. Oh, man. He himself is a butterfly. It's, it's an odd butterfly. I mean, he's like... Once it's just... It's like the next thing. Just a minute here. Uh, I'm, I'm breaking all this stuff down, and I start to see him as a white butterfly. But I also feel like he's not a white butterfly. And he also says, but I'm also a moth. And it's just like, ah, you're just doing this weird distorting thing again. All right, just a second. I'm going to just start by breaking this down and see what the next thing is. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. I've got to come up with some type of solution here. Uh, the best solution I can come up with in just a few more minutes of time. <sighs> I will tell you that where where I started and where I am now 
huge monumental improvement. However, it, there's still a clingy, distorting energy, okay? But we're making substantial progress. <laughs> we're actually starting to see true light, true love, the blending of uh, suffering with the blending of healing, okay? So it can all transition together as something bright and beautiful, uh, a rebirth, okay, of all the energy. So I'm thinking um, what I, I, I were, I'm just going to work with this sort of sacred geometry, okay? I'm just placing sacred geometry shapes all over and everything that echoes as a frequency of distortion. So, and the frequencies of distortion kind of create a major m monstrous cloud of uh, weird energy. I mean, it's just like, just drums all the frequencies of your own mind and just creates distortion. So I'm just placing lots of, as many frequencies as I can, I'm just placing lots of uh, s sacred geometry, energy, energy symbols of healing, okay? All golden light. And I'm doing like, <laughs> like, like super fast, okay? It's calming it down. It's calming it down. It's starting to get a grip on itself again. And it's starting to show me what is a, a beautiful moving uh, flowing water. And it's very specific. I mean, it's not like, uh, I mean, it's like hair, straight hair. You can see the lines of the hair go straight down. I can see the lines of the water come straight. Then they go down a little bit of a tiny waterfall and then they go straight. And it's like, uh, Hair, strands of hair, but it's all water. So I'm looking at this. And it's, it, this is a legit thing. It's not a distortion at all. It's like coming from a place of, of, uh, identity. <sighs> Placing just sacred geometry in here as well. And I'm relaxing it on down. Gosh, you're not gonna believe what I'm finding now. Oh man, this is this is just a lot going on here. I, how did this happen? How did it get like this? I have no idea. But this is seriously the energy frequencies that are interconnected with your childhood home. So as I continue to put sacred geometry, shapes, energy, golden light in this r revealing, okay, that is the most identity, um, d d d grounded identity expression that it's ever been so far. Um, it opens up and reveals lots of dead bodies, okay? They're just like, it's like uh, people in mud and they're all kind of, some of them are holding themselves and shaking, shivering. There's like thousands of like bodies down here. And it reminds me again of the cave of the weird skeletal beings that are um, like constantly working. But now there's another layer of it where I see like all these souls down here and they're covered in like a gooey mud sack. There's like so many, they're just, they just don't know where to go or what to do and they're so cold and they're holding themselves. That's what it's, it's like. And now they're, my spirit guides are reminding me of this, the tiny little human stuck in like the black mold crack of the wall. I mean, they're showing me this is an interconnected uh, version of that. So, this the distortion is getting far less powerful, far less controlling um, of what I'm accomplishing. So I'm able to actually get in here without it trying to push me away. Gosh, is this ever a ma major wound? It's horrifyingly bad down here, but am I able to get to it so I can heal this pretty quick? As long as there's nothing pushing me away from healing it. I, I instantaneously create white flames and I place it in the heart, like, like white flame, trillions, however many I need, <laughs> place it in the heart of everybody here. And then I place it in the mind of everyone here, I place it in the throat, the emotional gut, sexual body, root, crown, 
you know, mental by third eye, like I place it above, below, around, all sacred directions, you know, I'm doing this white flame to, for everybody. And they're all shifting. They're all shifting in consciousness very quickly, actually. It's a huge release right now. Huge, huge release. This is very, very huge release of, of energy. I'm just going to stop there. I mean, this is still releasing right now. It's a lot. It's a lot. This is going to be a very good start to a much better experience at your childhood home. If you want, if you want to explore a follow-up um, session, I would love to come back in and keep clearing things out because a major energy distortion of that caliber, I mean, it's not like I can just go in there and then just dissolve it. I had to go through a lot <laughs> and a lot and a lot and a lot and a lot in order to get deeper and deeper into the identity of what is causing this in the first place. And I've gotten to quite through quite a lot, but I still I I still feel there's there's more I could discover here that I could release to really clean it up. I mean, for me to walk into your the energy space of your childhood home and for it to be bright and fresh air and birds singing and Bambi running around playfully with Thumper and you know that is a healthy home. <laughs> so so I'm not quite to that part yet, but we made a huge step forward. Okay, all right. This has been a true pleasure. Thank you so much for the opportunity to help. And healing this home space for your family is going to heal your mom, is going to heal all of you, all the family members, and the generations too, before and after, and the land, and Mother Earth. And it literally will heal everybody in our, on planet Earth, believe it or not, because we're all connected to each other. So the more light we can get into these places, the more everybody experiences the light within themselves. So... Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you watching, if, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you again. I hope you all have a great day.